All right, and we're back, and we're going to look at Gauss's Law um, with what's usually uh, pr probably considered by most students to be the most challenging type of problem with Gauss's Law, um, where you have not only a, a non-conducting material, which means you're going to have some kind of charge density and electric field all inside the material, but in this case, a, a non-uniform charge density. That is a, a density function that depends on, on the radius. Um, the, the good news is, uh, we think about this exactly the same way as we always do for Gauss's Law. Now, Gauss's Law itself isn't going to change. And in fact, you know, for spheres, our starting point is exactly the same as we always would use for anything. Um, electric field times surface area is the charge inside over epsilon. What What's different here is the fact that uh, the charge inside no longer is just going to be a simple number to plug in. Um, it's it's a function. Okay, so in this case, well, just some arbitrary, I just kind of made this up, um, a density function of 4r squared, let's say. Okay, so that means that when you're inside the material, um, some some radius away from the center, okay, we'll, we'll draw on our Gaussian surface, that's a little r. Okay, and uh, basically what, what happens when you have one of these functions is we have to make an integral um, in order to figure out how much charge is inside that region, just like we would, al would always do. Um, so here's a case where, <coughs> uh, by definition, uh, a density is still the amount of charge you have divided by volume. Okay, it just happens to be a weird function. So that means, if, if you want to find charge, which is what we need for Gauss's Law, uh, it's still fundamentally just density times volume is charge. But what volume? That, that's the trick to these. And we, we have this dv thing, which is called the volume element. Well, what, what we have to consider is the fact that at this particular radius value, little r, um, you have a certain value for the density. And then if you go a little farther out or a little closer in, you have a different density. So we, we have to imagine like a, a little tiny thin shell I'm going to try to draw another little dashed line uh, in that same location, and then shade it in. We're taking, we're taking a real skinny little shell of this material. And it, it has a little bit of thickness, because in order to have volume, you, you have to have some thickness. And that thickness, a good name for that would be dr. So the question becomes, well, what but, you know, the volume of this thing is what we're calling dv. So within this tiny little volume, if we multiply that volume by the density function, that should tell us how much charge is inside that tiny little volume. And so what, what dv is, in the spherical case, um, well, that, that shell is going to have some surface area, 4 pi little r squared, but then it has thickness. So surface area times thickness would be volume. That's our volume element. So what we can do is say, okay, well, from zero out to little r, okay, so that would be the shaded region within our Gaussian surface. We have our, our function for our square times our volume element, which for spheres will always be or pi little r squared dr. Okay. And now it just becomes you know, a quick little bit of calculus. Um, we're looking at the, the integral of, uh, what do we have? 16 pi, so some constants. We have r to the fourth power <laughs> dr. Okay. Well, when you evaluate this thing, um, we're, we're going to get r to the fifth power. Uh, we have our constants, 16 pi, and you have to divide by that power, the five. 
So that would be our charge inside that ball. And so when you were to find the electric field, we've got our charge inside, 16 pi r to the fifth, all over 5, divided by the usual thing, 4 pi epsilon r squared. Okay. So our field would go as, um, what do we have left? 4 times r cubed all over 5 epsilon. Very strange. We, we've got an electric field inside this thing that, that goes as r cubed. Um, our charge <laughs> goes as r to the fifth power. Yeah, this is going to change every time we, we change our function, but that, that's what it looks like for a sphere. Okay? And if you wanted to find the total charge of the ball, all that would happen is your limits of integration would go from zero to big R. Okay? And, uh, and I'll let you do the math on that one. I just wanted to mention while we're talking about this um, how to do it for a cylinder as well. Exactly the same idea. Um, the, the charge we're looking for is an integral of density times a volume element. But now in the case of a cylinder, the only thing that does look different is the volume element. Okay, so if again if we if we have a little slice, a little cylindrical slice <laughs> uh, as our Gaussian radius, little r, it has a little bit of thickness to it, dr. What's the volume of that? Well, it's going to be surface area, which is circumference times whatever the length is, multiplied by thickness. So it's exactly the same idea that we just did for the sphere. Um, and now, if, to see what the integral looks like, uh, we'd be going from zero out to that Gaussian radius. We'd have our density function. Let's say it's the same thing for our squared. We plug in this volume element, which will be the same all the time for any cylindrical problem, and then we could evaluate this. Uh, it's going to be um, 8 pi length. Uh, we'll have an r cubed dr. And in the end, uh, this is going to look like we have constants. We'll get r to the fourth power by 4, and so the charge inside that, that cylindrical volume would be um, 2 pi times length times r to the 4. This is what we could plug in to Gauss's law, and we could find the electric field inside that region. Okay, so again, if, if you want to complete this, go for it, do the algebra. Um, but this is the gist. Volume elements, doing a quick integral to figure out charge within a, a certain volume, and then applying Gauss's law as we always will for, for any of these types of problems find electric field. So I, I hope this helps um, when you have these non-uniform densities. It's, it's an added, added step of math um, in order to find the charge. That's the key to it. Once you find the charge, you can plug it into Gauss's law and, and then we're set. So I hope this helps, and until next time, see you later.